In this video, we will export the finished flower model to view. Before we do this, we need to check one final setting. When the SELECT tool is active, stars appear in the 3D view. Each star represents a level of detail in the plant. By clicking a star, we can check what the plant looks like in each LOD. And when we click AUTO, we can trigger a lower LOD automatically when the camera is far away from the plant. When we zoom out, we can see that a lower LOD has been triggered when the star icon is no longer filled, and when we look at the polygon count, we see that it has been lowered drastically. Okay, so let's zoom onto the plant again and manually go through each LOD. Once we get to LOD 3, we start to lose the stamp and the petals become very angular, and on LOD 4 we lose the entire blossom. So I don't think that the last two LODs are of any use in this plant, so let's remove them. The global LOD settings are located on the meshing tab. Here we can indicate the number of LODs in addition to the full quality LOD. We want to lose the last two of the four additional LODs, so let's use two LODs instead of four. The simplification boost determines how strongly the geometry is simplified with each LOD, and with a value of one, the next lower LOD will have about a quarter of the polygons of the previous LOD, and that's usually fine. With a value of 2, for example, the resolution would only be 1 16th, and so on. The triggers determine the resolution or camera distance where the plant switches to the lower LOD, which is what we just tried a moment ago with the auto mode. To instruct view and TPF to use the LOD not only for the OpenGL views, but also for rendering, this checkbox needs to be checked. And finally, we can set the basic resolution of the plant when it is loaded into an ecosystem in view. With a zero, the plant will have the same base resolution in an ecosystem as when it's used as a standalone plant object, and with each lower value, the resolution is about halved. I'll leave this at zero. There's actually a lot more that can be controlled with LOD than what's being included on this tab, and we will cover these features in a later video. Let's now export the plant as a procedural file to view by going to File, Export, Export to View, and then we have several options. We can choose whether we want to export this as a single view species, which means that when we select the plant in the content browser, we will be asked in a second step to choose the preset. If we rather want the presets to appear as individual plants in the content browser, we can also choose export view presets, which will produce lightweight files that all reference the main plant file. I'll go with the export view species option and save the plant to my personal content folder from view. And now let's switch to view and check out the exported plant. Okay, so we're in view now. Let's check out the plant as a standalone plant first by loading it from the plant content browser. As expected, we are now asked in a second step to select the preset that we want to use. I'll choose the single flower. Before we edit the flower any further, let's go to File Options. In the Display Options, there are two sliders for the display quality of standalone plants in the view OpenGL view. The Plant Instant Draw slider defines the maximum quality that the plant has when it first appears in the OpenGL view, and the Plant Background Draw slider defines the maximum quality that the plant will be refined into after a few seconds. These settings relate only to the OpenGL views and not to the quality in which the plant is rendered. So let's give this a try and set both sliders to the lowest setting. 
immediately the display quality of the flower changes to a very crude low resolution representation but when we do a render the plant is rendered with a proper polygon count. Let's double click on the plant to open the plant editor and we'll see the same crude representation in the 3D view. When we look at the polygon count the number of polygons displayed is the number of the polygons in the OpenGL view and not the number with which the plant will be rendered. So when we click the subdivide more button the plant will not change much in the 3D view but when we do a render the plant will now be rendered with more polygons than before. In short Lowering the display quality for plants is helpful when you have lots of standalone objects in the scene because it will speed up the camera preview considerably. But it makes working with plants also more difficult as you do not get a proper representation of the plant's polygon count unless you do a render. So let's go back to File Options and change the sliders to a higher quality. Okay. So we're now back in the plant editor. Down at the bottom we can select between the two presets that we created and when we switch to custom the parameter that we published with allow external access is now accessible. By unchecking allow use of smaller LOD we can disable the LODs in the model and force you to use only the highest resolution for the plant even when the camera is far away. The other settings here are grayed out because we didn't enable or use them when we modeled the flower. One of the most powerful integration features is hidden behind the plant factory logo. When we click this logo the current plant variation is opened in plant factory and we can change the full plant graph of this individual copy. For example, let's add some excess perturbation to the stalk. When we now click the view logo, the changes are instantly applied to the plant in view in the plant editor. We can close plant factory now and go back to view to see the changes reflected in the scene. In the top down view, we have a blue wind triangle. This is the constant wind from Plant Factory and by dragging the triangle all segment nodes where we enabled the wind and gust motion will bend into the desired direction. All other plant parts will only react to the ambient motion breeze from the atmosphere editor. Now we'll explore the integration within ecosystems. I'm going to add an ecosystem to the scene and first I want to load the single flower preset. View will now generate several variations of the plant species and this usually takes a moment. Once View has loaded the plant into the eco, we can choose the number of variations by clicking here. Because we created preset variations for this preset, View presents us with all the flagged variations that we saved in the plant. We can select as many variations as we want and they will be loaded into the ecosystem. Let's add the multiple flowers to the ecosystem too. When we now click on the number of variations, the visual browser does not appear because we didn't save any preset variations for the multiple flowers preset. Instead, we can now directly enter the number of variations that we want to produce for this preset and you will generate new random instances accordingly. The wheel icon offers further options unique to plant factory plants. The quality boost is the same as the resolution slider for ecosystems that we used in Plant Factory. The higher the quality boost, the higher the resolution of the instances and their polygon count. The quality mode is more important. By default, every TPF plant is set to static mesh when it is loaded into an ecosystem. 
This means that it is baked to a static polygon object that is not animated and which cannot react to wind, ventilator objects or atmospheric breeze in the scene. Also, procedural materials, if a plant has any, are baked to textures. The second option, procedural, is the same as the standalone plant object that we just explored. It retains all procedural materials and it can react to wind, ventilator objects and the atmospheric breeze. Finally, Animated Mesh will bake the wind and breeze animation from the atmosphere editor into the plant and the plant is then baked into an animated polygon mesh. You can indicate the frame rate and the duration of the baked animation. Whenever you change any of these options and close the dialog, View will regenerate all ecosystem instances in the scene. So it's best to set this up before you start populating or painting an ecosystem to avoid longer preparation times. When you select instances and use the manipulate convert to objects option, you can see the difference between these three modes with the converted objects in the world browser. I already converted one instance of each type earlier today and we can see them right here in the world browser. The procedural option generated a plant object. The static mesh option generated a baked polygon mesh and the animated mesh option generated an animated polygon mesh. This concludes the tutorial on modeling your very first node-based plant in Plant Factory from scratch. I hope you had lots of fun and now feel confident enough to tackle a project on your own. In future videos, we will work through more advanced topics such as seasonality and iteration nodes, and we will also explore more helpful tips, for example, working with externally sculpted geometry. So see you in the next video.